Jiu-Jitsu 2000 here today. I'm coming at you with a very interesting video. I'm making some candles today and um, I want to share this process with you. So behind me I have a few items. I'm going to go through the items with you and I'm going to take you through the process that I like to use to make some dip candles. So I hope you enjoy the video. So let's take a look behind me. Let's see what we have here. First thing that I have sitting here is I have my small stove base and I have a little three wick oil candle that I made. I'm going to go ahead and fire this oil candle up and I'm going to put it underneath the stove base. I'm going to use this to melt my wax which is in this container right here. Now for these particular <laughs> type of candles that I'm making it's important to find a container that you can heat your your wax in that's fairly deep okay I'll explain that a little further here in a minute so I'm gonna go ahead and set that on this is just a bunch of miscellaneous wax inside it's old candles that I've scraped it's wax you know you can buy things like these when they're on sale you know if you see a good deal doesn't matter what color and you blend all those different waxes together and it makes what I refer to as a common wax and that's what I'm going to be using for these dip candles. Okay, Some of the other things that you might need not necessarily for the dip candles but if you want to make normal candles you might need some containers. I like to have a small a small spoon slash ladle just a small one nothing crazy uh, obviously a little knife. This one's coated with wax. You can see I've been using it to make candles yesterday. I have a little bit of cotton yarn. 100% cotton. Okay. And again I've got, I don't know, maybe three or four feet stretched out here. So that's the cotton yarn that you'll need. Okay. And it doesn't matter if it falls down or anything like that. It could be very flexible. I have a pair of scissors and I have a small wooden dowel. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to basically take my string and measure the depth of the pot and add a little bit more because I'm going to be dipping into that pot. But what I'm going to do, I've already measured, is you know I've cut this in four you see how there's four of them now and they're a little bit deeper than the pot that's what I want so go ahead and take your string cut it into four pieces that's approximately the same length as your pot see that if they're a little longer that's actually good it's gonna it's gonna help out a little bit okay so now I want to go ahead and take my wooden dowel. You can use a stick. It doesn't have to be a dowel. It could be just about anything you want. And what I want to do is I want to take the string and I'm going to use a clove hitch knot. So I'm going to lay the string in front of the dowel, run around the back, come around the front, come over the top, around the back and with that working in I'm gonna come right back through just like so this makes a small clove hitch and this is the knot that I want okay is this knot specific does it have to be a clove hitch no you could tie an overhand knot if you want it's just that's just the knot that I like to use I'm gonna space these things a little bit over an inch apart so I'm going to do that again. I'm going to come around the front, go up and around the back. And as I come forward, I'm going to come through the hole one more time, making a nice little clove hitch knot. Okay, let's do that a third time, and we'll do it a fourth time here in a minute. So again, my spacing is a little bit over an inch. coming around the back and coming through the front through this hole with the working end get a hold of it just kind of snug them up 
separate them so they're about an inch apart. Last but not least, let's do this one. Okay, so there's my four clove hitch knots on my piece of wood. Now what I want to do is I want to kind of touch them to the ground and I want them to be approximately the same length. Okay, so I'm just kind of pulling them down a little bit. I want them to be about the same length. So that when I when I set them down, I want them to touch about the same time. So let me reposition the camera so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just measuring it against the countertop. I just want them to be pretty close to being the same size. There we go. We look good. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to set it aside for now. I'm going to continue to let this uh, wax heat up. It's going to take a little bit of time. I don't want to rush it, but I'm just letting that heat up. Okay, I have a little rag here too I might need. And there's one more thing I forgot to mention, um, and I'm going to go get that now. And what it is, is it's going to be a cup just like this, and it's going to be full of cold water. So I'm going to go get that. I'll be back with the cold water when the wax is melted. So stay tuned. Okay, this wax here is just about all liquid. There's a little chunk in there you can see that's still solid, but for the most part it's pretty much down to liquid. So I'm going to go ahead and kill this candle underneath here because I don't want this wax to get too hot. I want it warm, but I don't want it like hot. So I'm going to back out and the first thing I want to do is I want to take these strings and just drop them down inside this wax. Okay, from here I'm going to pull them out. Make sure they stay separated and just let them cool let them dry I guess you could say so I'm just kinda holding them there if you have a paper plate or something you can set them down on that but in my case I'm just gonna hold them here Okay, earlier I mentioned a cold cup of water. I have that now. Now I'm going to show you how I use it. Basically what I want to do to establish these candles, let me move this stick out of the way, get it out of the picture here. I want to dip them down into this wax, lift them out, and very quickly I want to dip them into this cup of water. Looks like I'm going to have to do them two and two. What that does is it makes them dry very quickly because it cools them down. Then I'll dip them again. And again, we just repeat the process. Dip them in the cold water. Back in the wax. We're just going to repeat this process over and over and over until we start noticing that we have some candles. You can see that the wax is getting a little bit thicker each time I go around, it'd be nice if I could dip them all in there all at once. It's a little bit difficult to do, but you want to make sure that your wax is not too hot, okay? Because if your wax is too hot, you could be actually thinning the candles out each time you dip them. So make sure that your wax is not hot 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 just you know warm is okay but hot is not sufficient don't want hot wax 
Okay, so again, I just keep dipping them back and forth. You see how they're getting a little bit thicker? They're about birthday candle thick right now. But I'll just continue this process over and over until I have them the thickness that I want them. You notice when I pull them out of this wax, watch the very bottoms of them. Watch to see if they drip a lot. Let me do that one more time. Watch how much they drip. If they don't drip a lot, you know, like you see they form little balls on the bottom, that tells me that the temperature of the wax is just about perfect. If they sit there and drip a lot, that tells me that the wax is just a little bit too hot. But as long as they stop dripping fairly quickly, my wax is a good temperature. So I just, again, I repeat this process as many times as I need until I have some finished candles. I usually, personally, I like to make them between a half inch and an inch thick. That's what I like to do. But, I mean, you can make them thicker, you can make them thinner, you can make birthday candles, you, you know. And it doesn't have to be just wax. You could use, um, you know, like Crisco, you could use tallow, you could use lard, you could use paraffin that you buy from the store, beeswax, I mean, anything that's going to be making this type of material. So they're looking pretty good. Another thing I noticed you know when I was doing these the other day I learned kind of a new technique and that was if you didn't have the water you could kind of get them swinging like this and that airflow that you get between them kind of helps dry them a little bit quicker too so but I like the water I think it works the best I just keep dripping them in the pot and now you know why I said that the pot needs to be fairly deep because we want to make fairly long candles this is a fun process my daughter uh, actually is why I'm doing this video today because last night she came up and she said hey dad I want to make some candles and I said what kind of candles and she said those kind that you dip I said alright so we made a bunch of candles last night just goofing around we are watching the Oh, what's the name of that show um, about those people in Alaska? Oh, it's a it's a TV series, um, Life Below Zero. That's a cool show. If you haven't seen that, check it out. Pretty cool. Life Below Zero. So we sat there and made candles as we watched Life Below Zero. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Good times. My daughter loves that kind of stuff. I guess today we're going to take the boat out and play around on the creek. But she's in school right now. If you think that they're getting too hot or they're getting too soft, just leave them in the water a little bit. It'll cool them down and then you can come back and dip again. But for the most part, you get the idea, right? It's pretty simple. Pretty simple candle making process. So if you want some old, rustic looking, you know, historical kind of looking candles, you want to make them yourself and save a little money, this is definitely a good option. Okay, I think for the video you get the point, right? So I'm probably going to wrap this video up pretty soon because I don't want to sit here and bore you guys dipping these things in the, in the wax forever. I'm going to do a few more. You can do one at a time, three at a time, four. I like doing four. I don't know why. I mean, you could do three. It doesn't really matter.
just however many you think you can handle. If you do a few dips like this towards the end, it'll kind of flatten the bottom, so I'm kind of letting them hit. It'll kind of solid solidify the bottoms a little bit. It'll make them look a little bit uh, cleaner on the bottoms. I'll show you another option that I like to do. If you take, um, let me uh, set these babies down. If you want to make the bottoms somewhat nice looking, just set them down on the on your table and just cut the bottoms flat. Just cut them flat at the bottom. And then throw this old wax back in the mix. Now you have these kind of kind of flat bottoms to them. So then take your fingers and just kind of run them into your hand a little bit. They're still soft right now. Just kind of you all you're doing is kind of forming what you want the end to look like. And then once you get the end, you know, approximately what you want it to look like, then dip them again and watch what happens. It'll it'll make the bottoms look really nice. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that a couple times. One, just give them a couple dips. Nothing too crazy. Doesn't have to be anything significant. Dip them in the water again to cool them. And we'll go one more good dip. Just to kind of clean them up and make them look pretty. Okay, now that we have our wax uh, candles done, we're going to just take our scissors and cut them off. Just cut them off, just like so. Set them down and let them, let them cool. Put them in the fridge, you can put them in the freezer for a little bit, whatever you need to do. Just cut them down. Put that aside. And there's your four candles. If you want to put them in a dish, you know, something like this, and you, you want to set them in there so that they'll burn and you have kind of a container to hold them, this is what I would recommend using your small ladle for. Take you a little ladle full of, of, of wax and just kind of pour you a little bit in the bottom down there. See that? Set that down. Well, keep it up so you can see. And then just lay your candle down and just hold it. Hold it for a couple minutes and it'll hold it in place and then you'll uh, you'll end up establishing a a holder for it so that as it wa as it melts it'll melt down into this little container so that's an option for you if you want and it doesn't take long for this to solidify as long as you don't do it too thick don't get too carried away I'm going to go ahead and let these let these guys sit for a little bit and I'll come back and I'll talk to you a little bit more. See you in a few. If you want to take the excess string that's left over, this is kind of neat too. If you want to make like some little birthday candles or something, you can just dip this down in by hand. Do the process by hand. It's kind of neat. You can make some neat little birthday candle looking candles. See I'm getting a little thick down here on the bottom so I'll just pull that little chunk off and as the wax gets cooler you'll see more of that. So this would be if you wanted to make like again your own little birthday candles or something like that. Be kind of a neat process. It doesn't take much. If you get a lot of bumps and stuff around the side like this one has don't worry about that too much. Just keep dipping it like this and it'll kind of it'll kind of uh, clean that up a little bit. So I'm just continuing with this little birthday candle type candle. I took the other one that I had put in the glass and it's in the refrigerator right now. Chilling a little bit. I don't know about you guys but I personally think that that is the perfect size for a birthday candle. You can kind of roll it in your fingers a little bit if you want. That'll kind of get rid of the, the little bumps and stuff. Just nothing too crazy. It doesn't have to be anything significant. Okay, we're just making candles. We're having a good time. Okay, so I'm 
I've got these three here. I've got the little birthday candle design I made. Just right here, real quick, you know, it, it, you can make them so easy. Now, let me talk about how you would go about making an actual candle in a container. If you want to make a container type candle, something that fits in a jar or something, I would not recommend this cotton yarn. This cotton yarn works perfect for these kind of candles because they burn down over time. But cotton yarn, in my opinion, is not the best culprit for a wick for a candle that goes in a container like this because it won't stand up on itself. Okay, the wick won't stand upright very well. See? It'll kind of fold and fall down. So I tend to try to stay away from cotton yarn. What I like for these type of candles is cotton string. Look at that. That stuff stands upright. And that's what we want. So I'm going to measure just a little bit longer than what the depth of this container is. And I'm going to cut me a small piece of cotton string. Okay, so it's just a little bit longer than the container. From here, I'm just going to kind of bell out the bottom of it. Again, nothing too crazy. Where's my ladle? Right here. I'm going to ladle a small amount of wax into the bottom of this container. Okay. From here, that part that I bailed out, I'm going to stick it right down in the bottom of this wax while it's still wet. Okay. Do this as close to center as you can and let this dry. So we'll be back once this is dry, then we're going to add a little bit more each time. Okay, so I have my container sitting there, my wick is standing upright, and I'm just pouring small amounts of, of wax inside. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm making sure that my wick is staying upright. Okay, don't get too crazy on your wax here, just take your time. Whoops, spilled a little bit there build a little bit because my wax is thinning out it's getting it's getting cool which is the perfect consistency that I want because it's not too hot but it's starting to get to the point where I might need to put a flame under it again but we're almost done so I'm gonna go ahead and go with it break those off and just lay them down in there Oops, I'm making a pretty good mess, ain't I? Those bubbles that you see are because I was mixing the wax. Don't worry about that too much. This is the perfect consistency of the wax that you want right here. You can fix those bubbles after it dries. Just run your finger along them. So I think that's going to be good to go as far as this one's concerned. So we're just going to sit, let that one dry, and we'll be back in this in a minute. I'll give you a quick look at it. You can see that it's kind of layered looking. That's because the temperature of the wax is mild. It's not too hot. If I pour it in there real hot, it'll it won't solidify near as fast. And I would also have the, the tendency if the oil excuse me if the wax was too hot I would also have the tendency of my wick getting weak as a result of the heat and not forming right in the center but I want my wick in the center so I'll be back okay I let this sit in the fridge for oh 20 minutes or something so it's not quite solid all the way but it is a lot more solid than it was. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the wick down. I want the wick to be about a quarter of an inch. Nothing too crazy, just need to cut it down a little bit. If the wick's too long, the candle will have a real high flame and it'll bounce around a lot. I'm going to take my rag here and just kind of clean the excess wax, excuse me, that's around this glass. Just kind of clean it up, make it look pretty. Of 
kind of fun doing all this candle stuff and it, and when these candles burn down any excess wax that doesn't get used or when the wicks get too short or something like that I put this wax back in that container and I recycle it again so it's not no big problem you know if I have issues with the wax let's go ahead and light that one this one had plenty of time to sit let's go ahead and light that one I'll let those burn a little bit. Let me kill some of these lights so it's not so overwhelming. Sorry, I keep walking in front of the camera there. Bear with me one more time. So there's a quick look at the candles that I've made. They have a nice little flame to them. Simple to make. It's just I don't know what they call them, but I call them drop candles. They look nice. They do a good job. Here's that little birthday candle type that we made. You know, we can light that baby up and let you see what it looks like. Kind of like a little birthday candle. It's kind of neat. I thought it was interesting. Puts out some beautiful light. So in this bucket I'm going to show you here in a second I'm going to show you a little bucket here this bucket has some of the candles that we made last night I'm just showing you for example this one's a little thicker um, here's like a little taller one you know my daughter and I made all these last night here's a couple more here's some fat ones they look like carrots <laughs> don't they? <laughs> they look like carrots but that's that's uh, another one just to give you some ideas you know there's not really any rules you can make them however you want it's just how many times do you dip them and what's the temperature of your of your wax but these are just ideas for you look at this one short and fat let's light that baby up and see what it looks like that one kinda whoops had it there and then it went out that one can kinda burn on its own there's another one but gosh you know we made all these last night it was fun you know it's good good quality time to spend with your kid messing around doing stuff like this so again look at how thick this one is in relation to my hand I mean that thing that's a monster so I'm gonna put these back in this little container I just wanted to share some of the other options you know there's not really any rules as to it's just what kind of candles do you want to make really you want to make them long of course you want to make them long like this you're gonna need a deep container or make sure it's full so the three that we just made today plus the little birthday candle these guys I'm just gonna add them to our little collection of candles there's our little birthday candle let me light it again it's kinda cool it's a lot of fun but these candles are just they're just a fun fun project to do with your kids you know spend some good quality time but that's about it so I wanna say thank you everybody for watching the video today about my candles I hope that you found some good useful information today I hope you enjoyed the video hope it wasn't too long uh, as always please feel free to comment like share thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you want and let's not forget have a beautiful day everybody we'll see you next time bye bye go make some candles we'll see you around Have a beautiful day, everybody. Bye-bye.